Hello. Have you ever had trouble with your air conditioner in your auto or any air conditioner for that matter? I'll bet you have. And you found out that it takes a long time to make an appointment to get it fixed. And when you do, it costs a lot of money. Well, I've got a solution for that. And it's called the Autogen Manifold Gauge and Vacuum Pump Kit. Let me show it to you. It comes in this nice sturdy portable case. Now you can't see much of me holding at this angle, but I just wanted you to see how it's laid out in there. And I'll take the parts out and show them to you one by one. First, the meat and potatoes of the kit is this manifold gauge. And you'll notice that it's got a hook on it. So when you're working on your car, you can hang it there on your car and read the gauges. It's got a blue one and a red one. And these correspond to low pressure and high pressure. And your car is coordinated that way too, low and high, along with different sizes. The low has a much smaller valve and the high pressure, a large valve. Okay, now you look at this and it might seem a little bit confusing looking at all these numbers, but it's really not because we're going to be mostly concerned with the numbers on the outside ring. That's PSA, pounds per square inch, that we use here in America. And right here is a little sight glass. So when you finally hook this up, you can see the... Uh, refrigerant flowing into your system or flowing out of your system for that matter. Okay, let me show you the other features. Here's the hose kit that goes with this and I'll show you how to hook them up in a moment, but they're all color coded. So that's pretty easy. Now this hose kit is for refrigerant R134A. There are several types of refrigerant, but R134A is what almost every automobile uses. Now, should you have an antique car, say uh, a 68 GTO or Corvette or something that had an air conditioner, it doesn't use that refrigerant. It uses Freon R12. Now, you can't buy that anymore, but if you seem to, if you still have some and you want to recharge, this kit will do that also. This little guy here is what we use if you happen to have buy your uh, refrigerant in small cans like this, which you can at the auto parts store. You would simply put it on like this, tighten that right there, and then you run this screw down, which has a needle on it, and it punctures the top of the can. Then you open it back up, and that lets the refrigerant out, and you would of course, when it comes out, it goes out of this little valve here, and I'll show you how to hook that up to the whole system. And these, right here, are what you use to hook the hoses onto your car. And if you look at it, you'll see the red one here has a large Schrader valve, and the blue one is a small Schrader valve, so you can't mix them up. And they are marked low and high, like that. And to put them on your car, which I'll show you in a moment, you simply lift this up, snap it down on, and let it go. Real easy, just lift this up, push it down on the valve, and let it go, and it locks on. Take it off, you just lift it up, and it comes right off. Now the other part of the system, and a big part of the system, is this here. This is the vacuum pump, and it's very easy to use. It runs on house current right here, but the thing you have to be mindful of is to make sure that the vacuum pump has lubrication. So there's a little bit of pump oil that goes into this, and it's right here. You simply undo this cap, pour the oil in, and put the cap back on. Now you're going to ask, how much oil? Well, that's easy. 
because there's a sight glass right here. It's marked minimum and maximum. And as long as the oil level is in between those lines, you're fine, good to go. Up here are two little valves that you screw your hose onto. This one is the one we'll be using today. This is a slightly larger one for a different application, but my hose will hook right onto here and then we'll turn on the pump and I'll show you what to do with that. And that will evacuate the system. It also comes, of course, with a manual for the pump and a manual with hookup instructions for the rest of the kit over here. Now what's important and why do you need the vacuum pump? Okay, I'm out here in the garage, I'm back, and I'm going to show you how to hook this up to your car. Now you notice that I've already got these hoses connected to the manifold gauge and the yellow one over here to the pump. Now, the first thing that's really important is to make sure all the knobs are turned off. You want everything in the off position. If you do not do that, then you risk spraying refrigerant everywhere and you don't want to do that. So now we'll look down here, the air conditioner, and I can see a big line here that goes to what looks like the radiator because uh, the condenser is over there at the radiator. And there is right here a little cap. And you can see the size of this cap here. I'll set that right here. And I'll go on the other line and go over here and I see the other cap. So I'll take it off. And if you look, you can see one is larger than the other. The smaller one, if they're not marked, although this one is marked, you probably can't see it, it says low pressure. The small one goes to blue, the low pressure, and the red one goes to high pressure. You can't really mix them up because they're two different sizes. So now, these are just on the holder, on the manifold gauge, just to keep them out of the way. So I will take this off and I'll come down here and I lift this up, like I said, and put it on. Then I do the same thing with this one. Come over here, take the end, pull it back and put it on. change hands because it's a little hard for me to do left-handed since I'm not left-handed. And it's, whoops, very difficult for me to hold a camera in one hand while I'm trying to do this. There we go. Got it. Okay, now they're all hooked up and I don't hear any sounds. So what I would do is slowly open this valve just a little bit right here. And this valve just a little bit. When you don't really want to crank anything too hard because it's brass, and now the system is open and I would come over here. I had a little cap on this and I take this cap off. That's the exhaust. And then push the button and start the vacuum. And what it's doing is vacuuming out all of the air and moisture in my system. From there, if I had really done that, then I would leave everything else attached except this yellow one right here, which I would take off. 
Just unscrew it like this. And then attach it to this right here, which I'm not going to do because I have difficulty holding it while using the camera. There we go, I did get it anyway. Then I would turn this knob and puncture the can, open it up, and then go back over here. Open my valves up all the way and watch the gauge until this needle on this side read between 30 and 50. 40 is fine. And this needle read between 150 and 175. It does not help your cause to put more refrigerant in it. it it's dangerous and it makes the system work harder. So stick to those rules. And that's all there is to it. I thank you for watching. Hi, I want to leave you with one more thought. When you are vacuuming out the system and removing all the air and the moisture, you want to have the car off. When you're refilling it, however, with refrigerant, you want to have the car on so that the air conditioner will click on. That is important, but remember to hook up the hoses first before you turn the car on, because it could be dangerous otherwise, and wear eye protection. Have a good holiday season. Thank you.